ladies and gentlemen, look like the American birth rate has worsened. And now they're asking, how is this going to impact the economy? Oh, well, yeah, it's going to be a huge impact because you're going to have less people working out here, less people paying into taxes. So it's going to make a huge difference. Social Security, everything is going to, is going to have a domino effect. So the U.S. birth rate keep hitting new lows while an average of 2.1 births per woman is that's what's needed in order to replace the people that are dying out. Well, America is now well below the average and it's at 1.6, 1.6. In order to maintain a population, you need to be at least at a 2.1 and America is already well below that. And the desire to have children has also fallen, according to a new research brief for the Institute for Family Studies. Today, nearly one in four childless adults say no thanks to having children. And uh, no honey, no baby the relational economic factors associated with having children in America. So demographics, economics, and family-friendly policy, which America really did not promote the family at all. They promoted careers over family in this country. So I'm not surprised to see, you know, there's less marriages, less people having babies. And, you know, that's really a factor of what America has done. You promoted money and having careers over family. So <clears throat> there are more American adults saying, I don't want marriage, and I don't want to raise a family. The decline of marriage goes hand in hand with the falling fertility rates, simply because married women have a much higher fertility rate than unmarried women. So in 2020, the birth rate was 81 per 1,000 married women ages 14 to 55 and 39 per 1,000 unmarried women in the same age group. So even among those who want to have children, there are challenges. A summer of 2021 survey by YouGov for the Institute of BYU, Wheatley Institute, found the biggest drag on researching desired fertility is the hunt for the right spouse or partner that led to a list of reasons uh, people weren't reaching their desired fertility at 44% and was even higher among childless adults, followed by 36% who said they couldn't find, uh, they just couldn't uh, afford or had the money for children. So they're not having children because they said they just simply can't afford it. All right, and 25% said lifestyle or career were barriers. 13% said they had trouble conceiving. 16% said they were not yet done having children. Shifting patterns. Three factors typically influence having children, demographics, economics, and policy changes. Simply don't account for what's happening to the U.S. birth rate, according to an opinion piece by Melissa Carney. And all right, so they said the pattern of fewer births 
during lean times and more births during recovery occurs and it's no longer holding up. So before, you know, when the economy would, you know, we go into a recession and then everything would recover, then during that recovery, the birth rates would go up. But they're now seeing even that's changing. So instead, the plunge in the birth rate has been steep, especially during the Great Recession, with no rebound and a further drop. It's reflected of lower childbearing rates across, uh, you know, across all age groups and across all races. So everybody right now is having fewer babies. Everybody is in the country. So the list of women with the lowest birth rate, of course, are white women and black and Hispanic women without college degrees, both married and unmarried. All right. They're actually having slightly more children. The population of U.S. women of childbearing age generally considered to be 15 to 44. It has actually shifted towards groups that tend to have higher birth rates, and those are uh, Black and Hispanic births. So, um, hold on. All right, so uh, the birth rate continues to fall. Their research dismisses some uh, suspects. So they're saying, uh, they said effective contraceptive and the high cost of raising kids, more women in satisfying careers, and a lot of student debt didn't prove to play a significant role in their findings. So uh, Wang found another trend that shift a lot when it comes to falling birth rates and education divide. People with college degrees are less likely to be in this group. This reminds me of the marriage divide where college graduates are more likely to be married than non-college grads. That's what they're saying. Uh, what we see is that college educated adults are not only more likely to be married, but also have children. This is a new phenomenon given the traditionally college educated Americans have been the group with fewer children or no children compared with working class Americans. Experts say it is hard to predict clearly what will happen to the birth rate or to the country if the rate stays at its current level or keeps falling. But there is a cause, some say, for real concern. Experts speculate the ramifications exist for schools, for the economy, for building personal wealth, and even for personal relationships with different effects for the young, middle age or old. Stone, a demographer who is a scholar of both in the American Enterprise Institute and the Institute for Family Study, worries that most uh, women will not be able to have the number of children they desire because of various factors, kind of a human tragedy that could also lead to people being lonelier and maybe poorer as they grow old. All right, so there are very practical and more tangible challenges too, like the impact of a smaller generation workforce that is trying to support the social safety, uh, the, the social safety net or meet all the workforce demands that are vital to a robust economy. You just won't be able to do it. You're just going to have to find other ways, you know, to keep, whatever you can do for your economy. You can't force people to have babies at this point. You just can't. Some people just simply can't have 
babies and they're not even touching on the people that are having fertility issues. And that's both men and women from Western nations. All right. So without children, education institutions die off, reducing innovation. The stock market needs people to buy the products that give a company its value. The housing market depends on generations launching so that those already there can cash out when they're ready. Fewer births, they said will in some way impact everyone. Many who want children but haven't found the right partner say they won't have children unless they do at uh, 58%. Well, well, what they're pretty much saying is as long as they don't find the right person, they don't intend on having children. The other 42% said they might have children on their own if they don't find the right partner. Close to one in four adults who don't have children say they don't want to have children. Nearly half of the parents who want more children and 43% of those who are childless but want children say a child allowance would make them more likely to have one or more kids. The 2021 American Family Survey released by the um, BYU Center for Study of Elections and Democracy also found that a child allowance could boost fertility rates somewhat by helping families financially. Also that pay so you'll have babies. I don't think that worked out. They tried that, you know, all over Europe ladies and gentlemen, you know, where they offered money to families or uh, to women to have babies, and that has not worked out so well. So that right there tells you it's more than economic problems. People are having some serious fertility issues out here. They tried that also in Japan, who has a terrible birth rate, and they were also offering a free house and, and sometimes a free car if you had a baby and that did not work out for them. So it's way deeper than just an economic issue. You know, it's a physical issue too. So, you know, they, they have kicked around that same thing here, you know, hope that couples will you know, be inspired to have more children. But I'm just telling y'all, you can go and look at some of the studies over in places like Italy and Eastern Europe and even um, places like Germany and France. They've tried all of that. And it has never boosted the birth rate by offering money. You know, but Wow, America is now no longer at a 2.1, they're at a 1.6, which is well below the replacement number. So, you know, look, this is what your scientists say. That's how you sustain a population. You got to hold at least a 2.1. So America is no longer near that number anymore. But y'all, please tell me what you think about this article. Wow, I mean, this is deep, but this we saw coming a mile away. Look, I've been talking about the low birth rate in America since I've been on YouTube, (laughs) okay? And as you can see, it, it has gotten worse over the years. It has never improved. You know, and I remember at the beginning of the pandemic, they were even talking about a boom in births and since people would be locked down at home and that just did not happen at all. But domestic violence in America went up, but not the birth rate. I mean, that, that right there tells you the sad situation this country really is in. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.